The most visually unique dark medieval fantasy game is one I'm sure most of you watching this video are more than familiar with. That is The Witcher 3. While its core art style remains intact to this day, there was a time in its early development when it had a bit more of a stylized flair. Hot off the heels of the artistic masterpiece that was and is The Witcher 2, CD Projekt Red began development of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt as an aesthetic extension of the unique elements that made up the previous game's visual identity. However, throughout a game's development cycle, a lot of things change for one reason or another. Art direction is rarely an exception. And to be clear, we're not talking about raw graphical fidelity here. Instead, we're talking about how the original marketing material for The Witcher 3 set the tone for the next great adventure in The Witcher Saga with two simple tools, color and light. The Witcher 3's world and gameplay was initially revealed to the public through a video released in June of 2013, titled The Debut Gameplay Trailer. It is here that we see the first iteration of The Witcher 3's original art style that, like The Witcher 2, resembles a more fantastical, colorful take on a dark medieval fantasy, more closely resembling something akin to a mosaic art piece or a medieval tapestry with a hyper-realistic twist. The usage of color and light in this early trailer and the accompanying screenshots is what makes all the difference as it's higher saturation, overabundance of bloom, and what appears to be an ever so slight outline shader really catches the eye and gives the game a unique visual flavor. Now you'd think that the concept of a colorful dark fantasy would be a bit of an oxymoron, but The Witcher 2 is a perfect example of how you can combine a grisly medieval universe with careful color selection, saturation, and light to create visually striking worlds that retain every bit of mood, grit, and uh, mature themes that we've come to expect from the IP and the genre in its entirety. As a story that is foundationally a grim amalgamation of fairy tales and real-world historical happenings that is told through the writings of a character within the universe, that being Dandelion, this art style, in my opinion, is perfectly representative of the themes and references that make up the Witcher's entire identity. I can't say if this was CDPR's intent, but it is of my opinion that they struck gold with this approach, as The Witcher 2, to this day, continues to impress me despite its graphical fidelity showing its age. The fact that I can just look at a still of this game and make a connection like that is a testament to how unique and interesting this style felt to me personally. In one of the following promotional videos, we got a glimpse into the next iteration of the game's art style through a trailer for the Video Game Awards. Featuring the impressive smoke and fire-filled scene of the Wild Hunt burning down Heatherton yet again, the much spikier design of Aridin, a close-up of an older, grittier-looking Geralt and his new Kaer Morhen armor, the vast open world of Velen with crows perched lofted up in the distance, the dark haunted swamps of Fike Isle and the narrow streets of Novigrad. It'll all look very familiar because the core design of most of what you see here remains mostly unchanged to this day. The noticeable exceptions being Geralt's face and Aridin's armor. When compared to the previous gameplay trailer and its screenshots, we notice a few clear differences. Colors are less saturated, bloom is far less intense, and that ever so slight outline shader is gone and the overall sharpness of the image has decreased. The developers had evidently pivoted into pursuing a much more realistic depiction of color and light beyond this point, in effect abandoning what made The Witcher 2 stand out in the way it did. Instead of holding with its unique colorful medieval tapestry visual flavor, the game had embraced a much darker, bleak visual tone, which admittedly is extremely fitting for a game set in Velen during a time of warfare and societal collapse within battle-scarred Temeria. However, with its shift into a more realistic and objective take on its visual representation, it lost a bit of what made it so unique and appealing to the eye. While I prefer the previous art style, when you do ground yourself in the boots of Geralt of Rivia and his dangerous adventures as a monster hunter, you can really appreciate why this artistic shift was reasonable to make. Losing that fantastical and colorful artistry felt like the story was sort of detaching from the mind of Dandelion, as he told the tale as a professional bard. And it was more like we were experiencing it objectively from the point of view of our main character, giving us the illusion that we are no longer listening to the tale from the third person and more like we are living it through Geralt. The primary motivation for the Switch was actually much more simple. It was to adopt a physically based shader system. The Witcher 3 was originally built on top of The Witcher 2's rendering engine which made use of an older shader system that leaned heavily into the post-processing of flatter images and textures. The new physically based system is meant to more accurately depict the way light behaves in an environment and on its surfaces, delivering a much more realistic and believable visual with much more depth. In the long term, this rendering 
rendering method tends to be much easier on the eyes as it aims to represent the world in a way we are more familiar with in our day-to-day -day lives. So after the VGX trailer, the rendering system was changed again for what we only know as for technical reasons. What a shame that was. Nonetheless, when The Witcher 3 released in 2015, it looked great. Today, with its next generation version, it still looks great. With its solid gameplay and its excellent narrative, The Witcher 3, in my opinion, remains one of the greatest of all time, even without its original Witcher 2 inspired art style. I believe, either way, this one's timeless.